It's red left switch, Z right, sprint right G, U corner, half back flat. Nice let's and easy, walk. let's walk it. Here we go. My man, we the go. rhino, Alex Boone, is here to pull back the curtain. We get to sit down and watch film with a 10 plus year NFL veteran, a man who started a Super Bowl. Uh, Jeremiah Cyril's, our partner in crime, is out in the wilderness with Dang. no cell phone reception. He uh, he's missing the show this week because he's hunting with his father. So we'll ding him for being late and for missing, but it's their annual trip. So you and I are going to break down some film. And uh, we did the Malik Willis Packers debut last week, and it was 53 runs against the Indianapolis Colts. But this week, Matt Lafleur sort of took the training wheels off the passing game. So we're gonna we're gonna break down the Malik Willis. Rev- I would say the the most. Um, non-mean-spirited revenge game in NFL history because Malik Willis was asked all week about, hey, you're playing the team that lost belief in you, the Titans. He's like, yeah, I really appreciate them giving me my start in the NFL. I had nothing but love for the for the Titans. Uh, but he got to air the ball out, Booney. We're going to break down some of these plays. I'll tell you what, he took that a lot better than I would have because you know me, Mac. Yeah, I'd have been like, oh, they're fucking <laughs> dead. I'm taking ACLs and brains. The rest of them, are they're dead. But hey, credit Matt LaFleur and we've been talking about him a lot on our show during the normal podcast about how creative he's become because in this situation you lose your starting quarterback a guy who the team has full belief in who's really done some amazing things and you would think that all of a sudden the bar would be lowered so much more but it's not and it's because Matt LaFleur has become extremely creative and he's like you know what I let's just go out and I don't know, fucking run the ball 55 times. Let's see what we can do. But it's not like we're running simple zones and we're running counters and we're running stupid duos. We're running shit that people are like, whoa, 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 where has this been? Right? We got receivers in the backfield. We're running handoff bubbles this week. I don't know if anyone noticed this, but last week they introduced a play and it was like a handoff and then a bubble. And all of a sudden this week, they're running a screen out of it that goes for a touchdown. And it's like, he just keeps putting layers and layers. And he's like, hey, I need to protect my quarterback. But what he did this week was so interesting because he didn't put training wheels on. There was a one point in the game, he's running like a seven step. And I'm like, shit, they're letting this dude throw the ball. Like, they just don't care. But that's what you have to do. And I think that comes from having confidence, from having Matt be like, listen, can't really run the ball 55 times again because everyone's going to be on to us. Maybe we start to air this bitch out a little bit and have a little bit of fun. And, dude, it may have been the Titans, but he did a great job. And it really sets up this week against the Vikings for an interesting matchup. Yeah, and they have – so we're recording this early on a Wednesday morning. We'll find out Time more about, like, George, this is what, 6.20 in the morning. Yep. I think the first injury report of the week comes out in about six hours or so. So we'll know. But they've got a decision. Do you start a 100% Malik Willis, who's been great in relief of Jordan Love, or do you start a less than 100% Jordan Love against that Brian Flores front? That's a whole other topic. But oh yeah, these are these are good problems to have if you're the Packers. By the way, if you're new to the channel here, maybe you're a Packers fan stumbling into this. This is the O-line committee. Uh, we've got these film breakdowns on the YouTube channel every week. We also have uh, a podcast Monday and Tuesday, part one, part two, breaking down all the games in the NFL, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, the O-Line Committee. Click that subscribe button and uh, get your offensive line lifestyle content here. So I'm going to run these. You tell us what's happening. Let's do it. Three by one. This is pretty. This kind of goes to last week. They did this play where they pitched the ball outside, and it's like a same side pitch, which is always super fun. And we pulled a guard here or pulled a center. Dude, we're pulling Someone everybody. Pulled. This is part of the OP, RPO package. The more people that pull and the more people that it becomes believable, the less people are going to see this over route. The center's pulling. Look Pull at the, the center. So now th- this is great. See how 11 is coming down here? And he's like, oh, I'm going to crack you guys. And both of them have eyes on him. And now 56 is more looking at the quarterback, but 53 is completely lost. And he's like, oh, I can't get cracked, can't get cracked. But out of nowhere, we're going to slip this defender, and we're just going to come back. Look at that. We've out leveraged them. Simple throw, simple catch, massive play. Simplicity can sometimes be the most dangerous thing. Let's right? watch like that I, again. That's beautiful. It is beautiful. And it's beautiful because this is something that they saw last week. And all of a sudden, they're like, watch the same side pitch. And the minute that the center pulls, everyone's like, it's same side pitch. Right? Like they're, they're, they're almost confident because why would we pull the center? Everybody's like, oh, yeah, for sure. We're gone simple misdirection right here dude i'm telling you plays like this are so creative and yet so fun and yet look at the separation 
There's nobody within 20 yards of him. Here we go. Instantly, yeah. Tennessee's like, shit, it's going to be a day. It's going to be one of them days. Now, nah, we do get a little bit of a late hit over here. Romeo Dobbs like, all right, I see I see the game we're going to play today. Here we go. A little three by one again. We're going to cover one. Ooh, this is fun. This 50- I mean, this is. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. Malik, yeah, Malik Willis can't play, right? He can't play. Look at him. He yeah. alerted it. Matt LaFleur is like, oh, shit. Is that the fade route? He's like, yeah, it sure is. <gasps> Yum. Dude. That's oh. a ball. That is a sick ball, dude. Like, <laughs> So, okay. I have a dumb question. After watching, we broke down the film last week. And now we just even just two. Well, the, the first play was a very well-schemed wide open route. And the second one is just a beautiful, just a dime throw on a fade route. It's not like the Titans have a completely solidified quarterback situation. I know they took Will Levis, but they didn't draft him third overall, right? Mm-hmm. You're telling me that Malik, if you're the Titans, Malik Willis was just expendable? He was like, dude, they could have kept him under contract for like two more years? Yeah. I don't. What are we doing here? Once again, coaches sometimes make decisions and they're not right because that right there shows <laughs> Look you. Look at that ball. You're wrong. <laughs> and I'm going to show you against you how wrong you were. But that team's reeling from other things right now. I mean, dude, their quarterback cannot not get hit right now. <laughs> dude, he, can't, just... he, he, he keeps taking hits, but he also two or three times a game completely short circuits. Loses the ball somehow. Throws just... a ridiculous pick six or something. Did you see the clothesline in this game? Like, he got clotheslined. It yeah. was insane. This is just a shitty tackle. Shitty tackling. Little Tyler Craft. I'm just gonna throw this little flat route out here. Ain't nobody gonna tackle you. We'll slow this down here. What's that interesting out of this too is we're out of we're out of uh we're under center right now. Right? Like all of a sudden yeah. this is kind of one of the plays that we've gone to under center and what is everyone thinking? Zone. For sure a run. I mean, everyone's committed into this. And now they're all like, oh shit. Like you even got Romeo Dobbs over in the middle. But this is a great job by Tyler Kraft of breaking out of this tackle and just running up the sideline. Yeah, he had a, it looked like he had a couple options, but yeah, take take the wide open underneath, just get a few yards. Dude, take the simple throw, right? Like, let's not make this rocket science. I, I'm Romeo is wide open. I could have seen that throw, but this is burp, shitty tackling. And here comes another one. Burp. Oh man, mm, that'll hurt you. That's brutal. <sighs> Brutal. But it's but it's also just really a really well schemed play for an inexperienced quarterback, and maybe maybe if if the tackle is made, it's just a five yard gain. But making the simple play, I don't know that it, it's it's really just a simple play, right? And it doesn't force Malik to make crazy decisions. Now this play, like they're clearly like, hey man, we're gonna open it up now. Let's see what you got. Feeling it throws a bullet right across the middle. Oh, here we go. Look at this defense. We are we are as wide as well, oh my God. We are odd all the are way, these, dude. Look at these guys. Yeah, we used to call that an over KC look. So it's two guys outside of the tackle. So it's truly an odd defense. And see how the guards got his fist up? He's telling the running back, I'm coming across the ball. So sometimes we got worried that they didn't realize what we were doing. And so you would kind of hold a hand out. He's either telling them I'm going across the ball or I'm setting out. Yeah, see, look, you see how he's going to the right? Actually, he's not telling the running back. He's telling the quarterback. He's like, hey, I'm going this way. So if you think I'm going to help out, see how he goes from left to right? And he's like, no, nope, I'm going back in here because there's no threat outside. And these two off the edge, you'd be thinking there'd be some kind of twist, which there isn't, which I'm not sure why we would just yeah, why reverse we... psychology. You're not going to reverse psychology me. If you don't <laughs> twist, you have just made my life so easy. Like at, the, at all costs, I'm like, just rush way out here. I don't really give a shit. But at the same time, if you don't do anything, look at that pocket. Dude, look at this pocket. Look at this pocket. It's a great job, man. Yeah, the Packers are the Packers have historically been really good at developing and plugging in offensive linemen, right? Oh, I mean, you can we talked about best. this on the pod. You can lose Corey Lindsley to free agency. You can lose David Bakhtiari to injury, whatever. And you just sort of find a way. Look at this man. Wow. What a pocket. Boom. And just a wide open. Strike. Make that throw, man. Oh, I love it. I love it. Dude, it's. 
And I think, honestly, the Titans probably came in like, well, how complex could they get, right? Like, they're not going to do anything crazy. And pff, Packers were like, hold my beer. I got this. <laughs> hold my, hold my beer. There's another one. Dude. Look at this, man. I know. I know. <sighs> and these are, these are like long developing routes. You're just letting him sit back there, trusting but, the offensive line. Here we go. We got an overload. Once again, the right guard's telling you I'm coming over here. Right, we got four guys to this side. Good, good chance he probably made some sort of a Ron call because we're in an odd front. So he's letting everybody know we're an odd. Let's go Ron to looks like fifty three. So we're gonna take these four guys over here. We're gonna put the tackle one on one. We'll put thirty one on fifty six. Let's see. So sixty three is gonna go one on one over here, mm -hmm. and then we're shifting everyone else to the right. Seventy four is giving it away really hard. I don't know that I would have given it away this hard. But look at that. Gets picked up. Oh, that's pretty. Left tackle, sit your ass down. Ooh, just Let's enough. Take one more look. Watch left tackle here. Just enough. Here we go. Running Set. back, chipping if needed. It's a great punch. Is that Jeffrey Simmons? Yeah, that. it is. Yeah. Dude, that's, once again, that's a D tackle out there, defensive end. Great player. It's a great job. Look at this. Well, he tried Ooh. to jump so late. <laughs> gives, the, was, gives the first down. Laid down. I was wondering, like, where is he going? Where does he think he's going to jump? It's all right. Here we go. Once again, three by one. Let's shift it over. Oh, what did I tell you about putting a receiver in the backfield? Was this the play? Oh, there it is. we got a little screen I warned you. Here. I Up warned you. <laughs> That's fun. So for those that don't know, this play got put in. I think it was against the Titans, not the Titans, the Colts, right? Well, all of a sudden, we bring a receiver into the backfield, and we just talked about this. There's so many ways to make this stuff fun. All of a sudden, we bring AD in, and he's going to go in a bubble motion. We're going to do this zone fake with a bubble backside. But what are we really doing? We're causing mad misdirection. See, there's your fake. There's your fake. We're going to pretend like we're handing it to the bubble everybody's running that way and we just slip out the backside look at that everyone's biting on the cheese look at this dude i don't think you could inject it in my veins any harder than this this is mm. this is next level shit this is like hey they're so worried about this play let's run this play with a fucking screen and you're like oh my god blow my mind and then if you're the running back you just refresher for those of us who didn't play 10 years in the nfl uh, you're taught here to the, to treat the numbers as the sidewalk, right? Is Correct. that what you guys call it? So you're you're looking to find, hey, you stay on the sidewalk, and then everyone else knows that they have to clear a path for you. Correct. Is that sort of okay? Anything By outside? The way, I was watching a college game day last week, and Nick Saban is on college game day now. Mm -hmm. well, he's amazing, by the way. And he said one of the nuances when when he was coaching Alabama. He would teach his defense, hey, if you intercept a pass, whoever intercepts it, find the numbers, like literally whatever side of the field you're on, find the sidewalk, and everybody else turns into a blocker like it's a screen pass. They basically treat interception returns as screen passes. Dude, I'm telling you, the sidewalk is a very common term, and everybody knows where the sidewalk is, and the rule is if someone's outside of the sidewalk, right there you kick them out just like that if you catch them on the sidewalk like ryan is right here you want to just go straight up front them up because it forces the running back like that to make a decision don't measure just go attack him because the running back's smart enough to make a cut off of it just like that but it is it's funny how like everything is the same on every team like everyone always has the same beliefs but when you can run plays like this and be creative because now all of a sudden teams have seen you run the ball out of that they've seen you throwing the bubble out of it now they've seen a screen out of it like they're like dude i don't even know how we're going to defend this anymore like it and now what's the next progression you have all this misdirection you throw the fake screen and then all of a sudden you hit a fade or you hit a post like there's so many more levels that come on top of all this stuff that forces defense to be like well we didn't see that guy like i know you didn't and this week, this could be chess the all match, man. Chess Dude, match this, of the week, baby. Let's this is score. chess match. Are they coming? Are they not? Who is who? All these things. It's going to be an electric game. Malik Willis for Sam Darnold. <laughs> oh, I, I, mean, I never we, thought I'd say it either. I know. 
we were talking on the podcast that if I would have told you like two months ago, hey, week four in the NFL, what's your level of interest in Packers with Malik Willis versus Vikings with Sam Darnold? You'd be like, that sounds like a, a game you tuck away as like the sixth game on Fox at noon or something mm-hmm. with uh, Chris Myers or something. But it is yeah, let's flexing this shit to Monday night. Let's go. We should. This should be a primetime game. It'd be nice if you could flex earlier because I think that we're doing two Monday night games again this week, and one of them is like the Dolphins with their th- with Tim Boyle, maybe their third Tim string Boyle. quarterback. Yeah. It's just kind of brutal, but yeah, the Packers. What a f- what a way to keep your season moving in the right direction. Because I mean, I was one of them, man. When Jordan Love went down and they started zero and one, and you're looking at the schedule saying, "Boy." They're not going to get Jordan Love back until about week five or week six. Are they going to be like one and three, you know, two and three? But here they sit with three wins or with uh, two wins, I guess, two and one going into this Vikings game. So big game this week, too, especially because we talked about it. This this division is tough. Whoever wins this division is going to be making a statement. And it's going to be I really think it's going to be a dogfight till the end between the Packers, the Vikings and the Lions. Yeah. And the Bears. No, don't don't. Still waiting for the poor Caleb. Maybe you can throw uh, 55 times again. Sure hey, you know what? With your rookie quarterback. Huh? What could it hurt, right? <laughs> what could it hurt? He's the Rhino, Alex Boone. I am Phil Mackey, and this has been another O-Line Committee film breakdown. Again, if you enjoy this content, click that subscribe button and the like button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. And don't forget about our podcast, too, which you can find on YouTube and also O-Line Committee Apple and Spotify. See you guys.